Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So in this video we're going to get, go over major Palantir news that has chum, just come out just before Easter. And this is really, really big news. And it's kind of in very technical jargon. So I want to go over what I think this means for the stock and what this means for us as investors and yeah, what it just actually means. And keep in mind, we don't have code strap anymore. Where is the man just when we need him? So this is my understanding based on watching a lot of code straps videos. So I hope that it's accurate. So code strap, if you're out there in the comment section, please let us know if I got it right or not. So Palantir is releasing a new platform and this is the most significant thing I think since they have been a public company. So besides Apollo, Gotham and Foundry, they are going to have a new platform. And what is this platform? So it says our software and company have been built for this moment. So very, uh, he comes out swinging, right? So very big statements uh, from the beginning. The advent of more generalized artificial intelligence systems has begun to materially transform and advance the business we founded nearly two decades ago. The momentum that we are seeing across our operations, both in the technical development of our software platforms and the acquisition of new customers that such development has made possible, particularly in the United States, has significantly accelerated in months. So this is good news. He's saying that because of the advent of AI and how fast it's changing companies, they have been getting more and more customers and this has been accelerating. We are working on and will be releasing shortly a new artificial intelligence platform, AIP, which combines the machine learning technologies that we have developed for industrial and military partners with the latest large language models that have recently captured public attention for customers across the commercial and government sectors. So the first, when you, when you hear this, this might be not uh, such big news because, you know, they just have the existing system and then they slap on uh, chat GPT, but I have read this probably five times now, and this is very, very profound and has very, very deep implications for Palantir, and I'm going to explain to you why. And I think that Palantir has gotten really, really lucky. And you guys know what luck is. Luck is when preparation meets opportunity, and boy, has this company been prepared for this. So from the start, we have built our software products on the premise that uh, on the premise that granular access controls. Uh, so I, I don't want to bore you with the details, but they have been building Foundry software with very meticulous attention on who can access what data, right? So privacy. But these access controls alone, however, are not sufficient. We believe, we believe that principal features of our software will come to be required by organizations that seek to implement and uh, seek to implement artificial intelligence within the legal and regulatory as well as moral and confines of their enterprises. So what he's saying here is they're not just an AI company, so they're not just like this black box uh, model like chat GPT. They have very strong uh, morals in the company based on data transparency. Uh, as far as I understand, they make it very clear what decision was made by the AI and why, and they have very clear guidelines of what can the AI decide on, what a human has to decide on. So for example, uh, if you have a dying uh, patient, and so let's say you have two patients, one of them is dying and one of them has like a cold, right? And then on the one that has the cold, the AI can decide that, okay, he has no fever, he should take more vitamin C and get this injection and blah, blah, he will be well, right? But on the dying one, the AI gets blocked and it says like, okay, the, this patient is close to death and the AI recommends this, but a doctor has to come in and check through this and the ultimate decision is a human. So this is one feature, for example, that they have built in in Foundry. Uh, every large organization in the world will soon require a system uh, with these capabilities. So they are very certain that this privacy, transparency, and these hard lines and you know morals that these will be required uh, by governments and by very big companies. We will be releasing our platform to companies across commercial uh, sectors, including aviation, manufacturing, energy, banking, mining, pharmaceutical, and automotive industries, as well as to government partners, including leading defense and intelligence agencies across the United States and its allies in Europe and around the world. Uh, AIP will allow customers to leverage the power of our existing machine learning technologies alongside with the increasingly sophisticated neutral language processing capabilities 
uh, natural language processing capabilities of the newest large language models directly in our existing platforms, including Foundry, Gotham, which are now home to some of the most valuable privately held and industry specific data repositories in the world. So this is huge, um, but this needs a little bit of explaining. So. If you listened a lot to the All In podcast, uh, they have recently been talking a lot about the AI. And Chamath, one of the billionaires on the show, he has been very specific that a lot of these large data models work in a very, very similar fashion. And basically, it's sort of easy to create a, a model and tweak it so it, it fits your system. Uh, but the thing that is very hard is to get proprietary data into your system. So, for example, it's very easy for all the models to, you know, Google and go, go through the entire Internet and give you answers, right? But, for example, only Tesla has all the camera data, all the sensor data for their own self-driving software, right? And no other company has that data. Therefore, even if the other companies use the same uh, AI model as Tesla, their model will suck because they don't have that proprietary data. So Palantir has a solution that is transparent, uh, private, secure, you know, with all the correct access controls that can combine these two. Like it has this super AI system and you can safely give it your data that nobody has and then it creates this super specific amazing AI that is just for your company. So it took me some time to understand this, but this is really, really, really big. Again, the AI models are relatively easy, but the data is very, very hard. And each huge company, the CIA, the FBI, Coca-Cola, the banks, the hospitals, they all have their own data that is not public and it's supposed to be that way. So somehow the AI models and the data, they, they don't match. And Palantir has a way to bring these two together and create this superpower. Very, very profound. Our platform will be critical for allowing domain-specific proprietary networks to integrate and metabolize publicly available information alongside privately held data. Super, super important. The development and refinement of large language models alongside our existing machine learning capabilities has now opened up a whole new means of interacting with machines that has never before uh, existed. This emerging group of technologies will ultimately allow not only thousands, but hundreds of thousands and even millions of users to interact with uh, and manipulate data sets until now, that until now have been functionally invisible to most people. Some degree of technical proficiency on the part of users has for the most part been required. So again, this is also something that, you know, I had to read it a few times. But the point is that Foundry and Gotham has been super intelligent to begin with. All right, you're going to see some examples uh, and keep in mind that these examples, they were possible to get before, but you had to be technically sophisticated to be able to get these answers out of the computer. You needed to you know, understand how the program works. You needed to know a little bit of programming. Even like one of Palantir's sales points was that you didn't need to be a data scientist anymore. You needed, you know, I don't know exactly how much training on Foundry, but you needed limited training that uh, a lot of people in, the, in the, the given company could do. And you could start accessing uh, the superpowers of uh, foundry but this is disappearing now because with this large language models you can just ask the computer so it's giving not just the thousands of top people on the company but literally the millions like almost any employee in the company can go and ask it a question and they will get a company specific super good question with the advent of more generalized machine learning and natural language processing system, anyone will now be able to ask layered and complex questions in plain English and soon in other languages as well of data sets integrated with our platforms. An intelligent analysis working for allied nations in Europe, for example, might prompt uh, the AIP as follows. And now we have to go back here because the, somehow the picture didn't come through. So which of our special forces units are closer to an enemy tank position and have sufficient supplies of javelin missiles to mount an offensive? And which specific tanks on the battlefield are most vulnerable to attack? 
It's mind blowing if you understand what this does. So again, this data existed in Foundry and if you were like a general and a half uh, data scientist, you could get this answer out of Foundry and this was already mind blowing. This is all of why all of us are in Foundry. Uh, in Palantir because this has already been mind-blowing but now you don't need to have any data scientist training you just sit down and you say hey Palantir uh, tell me how what's the most effective way of attacking this point here and which of my groups can do it and Palantir will give you the answer I'm completely mind-blown the layered nature of this sort of query is what makes the ability of a user to interact and iterate with the system through plain language prompts so valuable opening up data sets and data models for exploration by an entire class of non-technical analysis across an organization while ensuring that users are only able to interact with data to which they have access. We have spent decades constructing the foundational systems that are required for users to uh, move from mere research and investigation to concrete action. Again, this is mind blowing. Imagine that you have a uh, patient again, and you're the receptionist of a hospital, and then you see that you know the, the this heart line goes like, mm, and then you're the receptionist, and you go, uh, AI, what's happening with this patient? How can I help it? You know, and then the AI will say, mm, you have no access to this data. So then this guy calls a doctor, and then the doctor runs in, and it's like, AI, what's happening? Okay. Uh, you know, this guy needs, uh, you know, an ad adrenaline injection uh, because this is an allergic reaction or whatever, you know, and anybody is able to get this data out of the system with your own data sets, with granular access controls and transparency and everything in it. It's pew, super profound, guys. In the commercial and industrial context, the development of these technologies will be transformative. No shit, Sherlock. A scientist researching for new drugs at a, at a large American pharmaceutical company, for example, might ask AIP the following. Which of our project's candidate drugs is predicted to be the safest for human use? And do we have the, uh, the capacity to scale up production for a clinical trial of these drugs? Again, this is just a few of the of the use cases that it can be used to. And again, this has been available already in Foundry. It's just you had to be a data scientist to be able to get these answers out of Foundries. But now any user can get this out. Uh, the results derived from these investigations, however, will only be useful and of operational value if they confirm to ethical and legal norms. Such conformity is only possible if the data that is being queried has been uh, integrated as well as segmented and isolated in alignment with the regulatory requirements of the domain-specific private networks, such as those imposed in the healthcare or intelligence uh, context. So, this is why Palantir is so amazing because they have been working on this for so long and they have all of this down. So if a new company hears about AI and you know they can't just share their data with uh, ChatGPT or you know find another AI company and just plug their data in, but if they go to Palantir, they know that their data is safe, they have dealt with all these challenges and yeah, it's very, very good. It's clear that the sophistication and complexity of these latest systems will only continue to increase. The challenge will be to ensure that such technologies remain subservient to our collective will. We must impose our values on the software that we create, otherwise it may impose an emergent and unconstrained set of values on us. It is essential that the systems we are constructing align with our directives and reflect our philosophical and moral commitments. And this is where, you know, all the people who want to fire Alex Carr because he's not an engineer, but a philosophist, this is where you see his real value. None of this would be, none of this luck that Palantir is facing now would be possible if this guy wasn't a philosopher and if he hadn't been thinking about all these privacy questions, all these moral questions, through the past 20 years. So it's so amazing that they already have this in the box. The application of these newest forms of ant and artificial intelligence have been and will continue to be determinative on the battlefield. Yes, no shit Sherlock. So I tried to make this a short summary. This is a very, very profound thing. I'm very curious. Uh, if the stock price is going to be majorly going up uh, when the stock market opens again after Easter. If it isn't, then people just don't get what it is. Obviously, 
uh, this announcement is not something that has an income connected to it. So Palantir still has to prove that this is going to work, but I totally see that they are the exact right company to implement this and nobody else is even close. And it's unbelievable what kind of productivity increases the whole company can get uh, safely with their private data, with you know all the controls in, which is very, very important using this system. So I think Palantir's future is super bright. This has been an amazing announcement and I'm so happy for the company and I'm so happy to be a shareholder of Palantir. Let me know guys what you think in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you want to go further and support the channel and get access to my uh, Palantir valuation model and you know some other exclusive content, check out the first uh, link in the description box below which takes you to our Patreon and otherwise make sure that you're subscribed and I'll see you in the next video. Happy Easter, make sure you spend it with your family. All right, ciao, ciao.